It has all come down to this. The battle for the victory in Senior X30 is upon us. And as you can see, the contenders, runners and riders are ready to form up for the toughest and longest race of the weekend. This is the road to the IWF. This is the big show as far as the contenders here at Zueda are concerned. It has been such a busy weekend, but they've all been chasing after one man at the front end of the starting grid. It's all been about Ruben Moya and the Pantano Racing Team. Last year, it was a brand new team, a brand new project, a brand new chassis. They are not new boys anymore. Everybody is going to want to take it away from them. But this is Ruben Moya territory. He's on his home turf and he has got a great opportunity from the front end of the grid. I'm going to see if we can grab a quick word with him before he gets himself ready for the big moment. Ruben, there's been a lot of expectation and build up to this one. Pole position for the grand final. This is going to be a very tough race ahead for you and the team though, isn't it? Yeah, we will see now. I don't know what will happen. I will try my best and I will try to win the race. It's, it's difficult. Everyone is, is fast. Uh, the hits are not, uh, they, you know, they, the hits doesn't show the reality because uh, of the old tires, better tires, worse tires. So we will see now everyone with the new tires. Okay, it'll be interesting to see what you can do. Vamos, good luck. Thank you. It's going to be an interesting one for Ruben Moya. Alongside him on the front row of the grid, though, we'll go and speak to the man who starts P2, Eduardo Vila for Italy and for TB. You guys have been a real thorn in their side over the course of the weekend. What is it going to take to beat them today? Uh, for sure, uh, now is the final. Uh, all, uh, all the fastest drivers are, are here. Uh, we worked a lot uh, to be here in the front, and we see now in the race. The last couple of seasons, you've been winning races and winning finals, and it's been one or two races where it's really come to strong. Now this year, it looks like you and the TB team finally have the package to do it everywhere. Uh, yeah, maybe this is the good year. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with it. Hopefully it's a strong one. Thank you. Eduardo Vila getting himself ready for an exceptional battle out there on the course. Everybody else is already uh, getting themselves geared up and ready for action. Sam Shaw, third position on the starting grid. What an opportunity for the premium karting team, the Lando Norris chassis and the British boy wonder Sam Shaw. Third position on the grid, finally getting some good luck and getting to the position he deserves to be at at the front end of the field. He's had so much bad luck over the last couple of years. Not anymore. This is his opportunity. Alongside him on the starting grid, though, is the Frenchman Marlo Bollier for the 2N Racing Team. He's been a front-runner competitor all weekend here at Suera, and he has every chance to make this weekend go right to the top. The Frenchman has always been there or thereabouts. Now this is his best chance yet of going to the top spot. There are plenty of other contenders that are going to try and make this race weekend come to them. Fifth position on the starting grid for the VDK Racing Team and for the pride of Ireland, Finn McLaughlin. Every opportunity, having taken the fastest lap in time qualifying on Friday evening, now he has a chance to go for the top spot. He is the fastest man this weekend as far as qualifying is concerned. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. Fifth position on the grid for him, and he's going to get some support from that third row of the starting grid from a man who knows all about the pressure in Senior X30. The Belgian star Sam Balota lining up on the third row of the starting grid in his Kart Republic from VDK. Every time he comes to fruition in the Miami Euro Series, he is there to go for glory. He never seems to have an off day in terms of speed. Luck isn't always with him, but hopefully today it's going to be a Sam Balota route. So uh, we're getting ourselves ready with the three-minute board going up onto the circuit. Kalai Atkins getting himself ready in the crop promotion. The youngster from Jamaica, based in London these days, of course. But he has every chance to charge his way further forward. And he's been very strong in the latter stages of the race weekend. Jules Caranta lining up alongside him on the starting grid in the Jana Racing Kart. This is a big day for Jules Caranta. He was the junior champion last year, stepping up to the senior category in 2023. We expected it to be tough. We didn't expect him to be winning fresh out of the blocks. Danny Caranini is going to be there in the top 10 as well. Ellie Goldstein is not far away from the top 10 either. They've really started to make an inroad into the second half of this weekend. If anyone's going to charge from outside the top 10, expect it to be last year's champion, Belgium's Ellie Goldstein. There are so many big names to charge their way forward. Watch for the rejuvenations of the likes of Evan Schilter, Bart Harrison, and in the tail six, even Sita van Meert, who's been consistently in the top six all weekend long. There are so many drivers that could throw a curveball into the mix. DJ, it's all up to Ruben Moyer to not let it slip on home soil. 
Yes, indeed. This is going to be an incredibly tense battle all the way to the end. You can see Ruben Moore already taking a seat. Gonzalez just, uh, Eduardo Villa just taking his seat now on the outside row. Martin Bean makes his way up to his pedestal. He's getting ready to get this race kick started. The wind still a factor out there, but it's the hottest it's been so far this weekend. 18 degrees air temperature out there. It's actually turned into a rather lovely Sunday here at Zuera. And the one minute board goes out and we're about to get the final race of the weekend underway. Once again, 36 carts about to go to battle in this one. And uh, very much, this is gonna be probably the best final that we're gonna see here this weekend. That's not doubting the credentials of what we saw earlier on from the minis or the juniors. They too were both amazing races, but this one, I've got a feeling it's got something special in store for us. It's really hard to know just how close to the chest, the cards are being kept at Pantano yeah. Racing. Because Ruben Moyer has still been saying, well, yeah, we haven't done the job yet. You know, we've got every win, we've got every qualifying heat one, we've got the super heat one, but it's not quite there yet. We're still trying to find a little bit more. Mm. And I just wonder whether they're trying to keep people guessing or whether there genuinely is not quite the perfect uh, setup yet in that card. I mean, they're still working at it every weekend. And if that's the case, if the latter is true, then we're gonna have quite the thriller in this final because there's going to be several drivers who will want to make this race their own. So, Ruben Moyer and Eduardo Vila on the front row of the grid from Sam Shaw and Marlo Bollier, Finn McLaughlin and Sam Belota, Kalai Atkins and Jules Caranta, Danny Caranini and Aaron Garcia from Ethan Faramond and Ellie Goldstein, Mika Voss and Juan Aluja, then Eduardo Dominguez and Adria Mustienes, Evan Gilte and Ali Mattel from Paul Chaus and Harry Platten, Bart Harrison and Eloy Gonzalez from Arno Malizia and Henke Calteran, then Alessandro Tudisca and Mark Granada from Marcus Lizio and Petra Babichkova. Back on Weisenberger, Kevin Lantinga, Sita van Meert, Clement Outran, Hugo Besson, Fred Green, Arthur Valsort, and Julian Carmen fill out the grid. This is going to be a very tough race. And for 16 laps, essentially 16 miles roughly around the circuit, this is going to be tense all the way to the checkered. It really is. 16 miles. God, that sounds like such a long race. How, how long is a lap of the Isle of Man TT? Very nearly 16 miles. Very, yeah, so <laughs> I, think it, I think it is more. Yeah, I think it is more as well. But consider themselves doing probably maybe around a just shy of a lap of that uh, at these speeds next to each other. Actually, I'd love to see that. When was the last time karting was on the Ottoman? I know they did street karting the Max back Brompre. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did do it back then. I'd like to see that back. I don't know about you. Well, we'll uh, get onto the uh, Douglas <laughs> Tourist Board and we'll yeah. uh, try and figure it out. Yeah, we'll say, can we squeeze all these 36 carts around your uh, villages, please? Thank you very much. Yeah, you we'll never know. You, you never, never know. know. you never know. Here we go then, though. It's the last one of the weekend. Senior X30, welcome one and all from around the world. If you are joining us on motorsport.tv, YouTube or Facebook, welcome and get ready to buckle into what is set to be one amazing final that's about to take place. Again, if you want to catch up on any of the results throughout the weekend, you can head to the IAM Euroseries website or head to ucart.io. And as well as live timing, if you want to stay on board for this one, head also to the IAM Euro Series webpage. You can catch all of that there. Myself, Anthony Jordan, Jake Sanson in the comments box. It's been a fabulous first round. The next round at uh, Marienborg in Belgium in about seven weeks' time in the uh, latter stages of April. Very much looking forward to that. A completely different circuit to what we see here. But the racing will be as fierce as ever. And this race is definitely going to be a test. Have Pantano kept their cards close to their chest? Have they got an ace up their sleeve? What can the TB boys, Eduardo Vila and Eli Goldstein, do about their raw potential? And is there going to be a bit of a charge back from the likes of Finn McLaughlin? Can Sam Shaw finally unlock his first IAMI Euro Series win? Are we going to see Danny Caranini get back into the action? Can Jules Caranta double up on his junior success last year and take a senior final win here this year? There are so many variables. What will Evan Gilter do in his final ever karting race for the time being at least? And can Sita Van Meert, the fast lady, charge her way back into prominence, having been consistently in the top six all weekend long? This is going to be a very 
our final to determine. Here we go. The Junior X30 final is done. The Senior X30 is underway now. Up we go to the first corner. And it's going to be a perfect start for Ruben Moyer. Sam Shaw gets into second place. The field works its way through the first corner. Flat on the throttle. Is everybody going to get through without incident? So far, so good. But the cluster effect comes in at turn two. And the drivers are trying to charge their way forward. Ruben Moyer leads the way, though, from Shaw and Vila. Up to fourth position comes Marlo Bollier, getting the run on the inside of Finn McLaughlin. Good start then from the entirety of the field. One car going slightly wide in the mid pack there, gets it back onto the tarmac. That's the crucial thing then as the field goes three wide round turn five, a little further back. Eduardo Villa all over the back of Sam Shaw, who checks over his shoulder just to make sure it's clear as he goes on the hunt for Ruben Moyer. Moyer had the perfect weekend as Platten. Platten. Black flag for Harry Platten. Well, that's a, that's a very big shock. Harry Platten on the very first lap of this race has been given the black flag. Goodness knows why. Well, that is a what? very strange situation. I mean, normally you get a technical flag and then it's ignored, but on the very first lap of the race, Harry Platten is shown the black flag. That means get out of the car, your race is done, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much indeed. A shame for the Brits is all over the inside curve there. Who was that? I think that was Gilter trying to make progress. So still they continue and we are being told that the reason for harry platten getting the black flag is because there was a mechanic still working on the cart when they should have been getting around the circuit for the formation lap or well, certainly within the final minute or so of preparation so it's uh, not harry platten's fault unfortunately but it's still the same result the black flag is what he gets caranta here being nerfed slightly by danny canarini uh Carinini moving him up into p8 now for him He's still battling as he dies back down the inside through turn eight. Says, thank you very much. I'll take that one as the field still side by side. Three rows of side by side, all six of them. So still they battle on. And it looks like Paul Chaus battling away with Voss and Rattel as they try and work their way forward up the midfield as well. Everybody's still trying to keep their eyes wide open and take these opportunities the second they come. But Ruben Moyer holding on for the Pantano Racing Team. So much potential last year. Now it's a reality. And here comes Eduardo Vila, still trying to work with Sam Shaw, but he's going to go for the move on the inside line. As that is Petra Babic Kova, I do believe, who has fallen all the way down to the back of the field, got spat out of the queue. And now Vila, I do believe, is in second. Yes, he is. He's got through past Sam Shaw. Yeah, Vila set the fastest lap on that last lap as well. So is uh, working with Shaw now that he's in front to uh, maybe catch up to the back of Moyer. And we know that Vila can catch up to the back of Moyer because he did it in the super heat earlier on. Again, further back in the order, the 273 there. That is Mastinas. He's got Illusion just in front. Vos Garcia's in there. Harry Platten, who's still out on circuit, has not actually come into the pit lane just yet. And that's a slightly big problem there because if he hasn't noticed that as we watch... Uh, Aluya and Garcia work together in unison. The black flag is going to come again for Harry Platten. That's a big disaster for him. But he's now going to have completed three laps uh, by being shown the black flag. Unfortunately, he's going to get the book thrown at him for that one, if that's uh, going I, to be the case. I think he has come in, actually. Oh, he has, he has he, come in. He, he's disappeared, yeah, off the timing big. I think he's realized that, uh, yeah, this race is not going to be his day, unfortunately. So Moya, Vila, Shaw, McLaughlin, Belota, Atkins. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, oh, that's real. a real shame because that's not really Harry Platten's mistake, is it? No, no, he came here. It's his first time back out of retirement as well, and it to be ended like that so abruptly in the final. Uh, yeah, never a nice feeling, but uh, the race goes on nonetheless. And Packen Weisenberger, now the fastest lap of the race, 103.755. Currently, Weisenberger is... Nowhere near the front, I don't think. No, he's not. He's in 28th position at the moment, dueling away with the likes of Fred Green and Clement Utran, trying to work the way forward. So uh, a lot of hard work still to do here, really, as Hugo Besson is under investigation. Not entirely sure what for, but certainly Hugo Besson having uh, a couple of moments out there on the course. But it's still Moya from Vila, Shaw and Belota. Then Atkins, McLaughlin, Bollier, Caranini, Goldstein and Caranta. So we've got 10 big names up in the top 10, and they're all trying to charge their way forward. What about last year's champion, Ellie Goldstein? Certainly making steady progress, ninth position so far, but he's the kind of driver, if you were watching at uh, Karting de Fania last year, he worked his way through from essentially the doldrums, charged his way through, catapulted his way to the front, and managed to come through with the victory. It was an amazing fight back. So if he can do that again, then he's got a chance. But poor Harry Platten, not the return from race retirement he wanted. 
No, and you can imagine the frustration that's going through his mind there as well. Big shame for Platten. Jules Caranta now the fastest man out in circuit. 103 is the time. He's in dipped into those now, as several others have. Uh, but he is the fastest out of them. He's still currently down in P10. He's got Goldstein just in front as well. Keeping an eye on the gap as well for the race lead. It's coming down a little bit uh, closer, but not as much as he'd like. There is Caranta, and there is Eli Goldstein, who won the superheat earlier on, and uh, we were expecting good things from uh, Goldstein in this one. And so far, it's looking okay. P9 and still close enough and still uh, able to close those gaps. And still plenty of time to do things mm. with it. 11 laps still to go. All he has to do is keep his tyres going longer and better than his rivals around him. He still has a good shot. Gilles Caranta, another fastest lap from Gilles Caranta. A 103.3 this time as he comes through. As we watch Marlo Bollier get up the inside of Kalai Atkins. That puts him up into P6. Caranini is still there in eighth position in front of Goldstein and Caranta, then Gonzalez. And then we have the three MDC Birolards battling away with each other. Aluya, Chaos, and uh, uh, Garcia. So Aluya, Chaos, and Garcia working very hard there as they run through. But Kalai Atkins is trying to respond to Marlo Bollier. Come on. You're spending far too long racing me. Bollier wants to land oh, him no. out of the way. Oh, and then no. collided. Bollier straight into the path of everybody else. There's at least two or three drivers that had to take avoiding action. That was pure egotism from both drivers. Neither Kalai Atkins or Marlo Bollier were prepared to give best to the other. And unfortunately, it ended up in contact. Oh, but it was so close to the other cars that came through. They were a blur when they whizzed past the screen of how slow he was going after the contact. He was very lucky there to get away with just that little bit. I really want to see that one again because that was, you know, Atkins was trying to gesture to Marlo Bollier, stop racing me. We are losing ground to the guys in front. Bollier really didn't fancy being beaten by Carly Atkins in that particular one. He wanted to get ahead of the crop promotion. And unfortunately, they spat each other out of the way. Here he is. Now look at this. Now here he comes the move. Look, Bollier is nudging Atkins. He gets alongside him, they lock wheels, and there's nothing they can do. Mavalia gets spat out, look and close. look how close that was. That was such a near miss. They had to uh, just completely drive off the circuit to avoid the contact, but rightly so. Just so unfortunate there as well, and that just shows how close this racing is. Well, let's look at who's gained from that and who's dropped back from that, because Goldstein is now up to sixth, Caranza's up to seventh, Atkins dropped to ninth, Bollier dropped to 13th. Caranini was the one who had to take onto the grass, so the former IWF winner, and look, Bollier picking up a warning flag, and I have to say, on that particular occasion, I'm not exactly surprised. Well, we're on lap seven. New race leader Ruben Moya still leads the way. Seven tenths of a second is the gap between himself and Eduardo Vila, who's still there in P2. Shaw has not managed to stay in touch with Vila. He's still there. There he is on your screen. He's kind of ping-ponging again up and down. We'll keep an eye on it as the race progresses, but he's still doing a good job as off the track. Who was that? Oh, there's two or three carts going off by the look of it. Big dust cloud, and then everybody basically having to take avoiding action as a result of it. So it looks as though we've got uh, Van Meert down the order a little bit there. Trying to see who else got involved in that one. I think we had uh, a couple of drivers. I think Juan Aluja was the big name that dropped back. So Juan Aluja, unfortunately, has dropped a long way back as a result. So he was up in the top 10. And I'm afraid Juan Aluja is now all the way out of it. Well, this has been some final we've seen here at the start of the IAM Euro Series in 2023. Again, we go on to lap eight now and pulling into the slipstream further down the order. We see that Caranta has now moved up into P6, so he's got past Goldstein. So Goldstein now back down into P7. Gotta say, Eloy Gonzalez, 14 places gained. He's up to P8. Yeah, really good work from Eloy Gonzalez. He had a bit of a poor run in one of the heats yesterday, which dropped him a long way back, but he's always been consistently top five sort of pace. So Gonzalez, uh, not a massive surprise to see him fast, but to make that much progress, it really showcases how fast and how high he could have been over the course of the weekend. Goldstein up five places, though. Hello, Gonzalez up 14. Chaus is up nine. Weisenberg is up eight. And Julian Carmen is up nine from the back of the grid as well. So there's quite a few movers and shakers in the field. Sita van Meert has moved up seven places as well. So there's quite a few drivers on the comeback charge as we reach half distance. So as the, say, half-distance race has been achieved now, and I've got to say, oh, and oh, the pit that's, lane. That, is that Green? That's Fred Green who's yeah, gone. Yeah, he went off earlier on in the race, didn't he? It wasn't a good start, and unfortunately, I think he's just felt like, mm, might as well just bring this in. There's no point, save everything, and uh, 
go on to round two. Well, when you're racing for 30-second position, yes. essentially, you're not going to score any points. You're not really going to get anything out of it. So from Fred Green's point of view, you may as well just make sure your repair bill isn't too high in yeah. time for the next one. Exactly that, exactly. Well, here's a replay. What is this one? Oh, now ah, that is that. how Bollier got uh, completely shafted initially by Carly Atkins. So that'll be why Bollier was angry mm -hmm. with Atkins. So that's how that move started. Now, that's a very revealing bit of information there, actually. So Bollier wanted to take revenge, essentially, on Atkins because Atkins, from his point of view, started it. I think revenge is a strong word, but, you know, oh, Zach Atkins gets the warning flag as well, so they just wanted to see. Yeah, it's tit for tat as far it, as <laughs> that looks to me, to me. It is. If anything, I wouldn't say they were as bad as each other, because, I mean, yes, OK, the first one happened, but... But it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, isn't it? It, it is. They're as, it blatant, is. They're, as uh, yeah. they're easily as culpable as each other on that one. Well, as I say, the race still goes on, and... Mario Villa is just slowly eking away that gap at Moya. It's coming down. It is coming down, but it's not coming down as fast as I think Villa would like. He is running out of time. We're on lap 10 of 16. So if he's going to get it done, he's got to push forward. Is, is even that Shaw faster. down the order? That is. That's Shaw. Yeah, he's dropped sure. to fifth. Belote yeah. has got through to third, and his teammate McLaughlin's gone with him. Now, these two could actually be the real dark horses of this race because now they get to work together. There's Jules Caranta, who's currently in P6, ahead of Gonzalez and Goldstein. So all eight of those drivers, for my money, still have a shot at the podium here. It's starting to look a little bit out of reach for Garcia and Chaus. It's not impossible, but it's certainly looking a little bit more out of reach. But certainly in the top eight, anything can still kick off. And these two could actually be the linchpins. Belota and McLaughlin working in unison together could actually cut towards Vila and Moya very quickly indeed. They could indeed. Back onto the start finish straight they go then, tucking into the slipstream gap now. Back up to six tenths of a second between the uh, top two of Villa. Is not able to close that gap to Moya. This is interesting. Moya could make this a perfect first round for the start of the season. But back here, McLaughlin trying to get past Belota, but Belota just covering off that inside line. He's not gone full defensive, but he's just coming off the racing line, just those few centimetres here and there, just denying McLaughlin the chance to get through, but not losing enough time. Like you say, these could come into play if it all kicks off at the front, but something tells me I don't think it will. This is going to be very tough to predict how far the VDK boys can actually push this because you've got Moya and Vila half a second apart. And Vila's really going to start now. This is his moment. He knows it. This is when he can really open up the taps on Ruben Moya. Balota and McLaughlin are going to be there or thereabouts in third and fourth. They're trying to work together in unison to close up on Eduardo Vila because Vila is going to start to really get into it. Ruben Moya looks over his shoulder. He knows where Eduardo Vila is. He knows he's really got to start to open up the taps a little bit more again now. Four to go. This is going to be tight, but Belota and McLaughlin are running out of time, and that is a retirement, I'm afraid, for the 234. That's Danny Caranini. Well, Caranini, who was fighting at the front throughout this weekend, now sees himself broken and at the side of the track during the final. An absolute disaster. And again, another driver who's going to have to come back a lot stronger at the next round. Such a shame for him, but we'll see him back fighting fit. Arian Borg in a few weeks' time. McLaughlin then still there in P4, who I've got to say, Caranta has closed in on. Jules Caranta could fight uh, back here and gain a couple more positions. If they're not going to catch the uh, drivers in front, he might as well catch them. So Moya, Vila, Balota, McLaughlin and Caranta. That's your top five. Shaw is down to P6 now mm. with Gonzalez and Goldstein still just trying to keep in touch. It's not so easy uh, here at Zuera for those men to try and make the impression. But look, Vila really is running into Ruben Moya's draft now. Half a second, he's not gaining enough. It's just ping-ponging still again. He gets a little bit closer in the mid-lap, but then on the start-finish straight, he loses it again. And it's just not latching onto it as McLaughlin now is all over the back of Belota. Now Jules Caranta comes in, and now McLaughlin dives down the inside for P3. Now Caranta looks to go for the move as well, stays behind as they go down in towards turn number five. Long sweeping into the tighter part of turn six, and now they negotiate the left-hand or the right-hander of turn seven. 
down into the hairpin of eight, and here comes Caranta down the inside. Nicely timed, separates the two VDK teammates of McLaughlin and Belota. See, Finn McLaughlin essentially making the move on Belota because he felt, well, this isn't working. This yeah. isn't going to get us any further. Let's try something else. So he gets through, and Caranta thinks, right, well, I might get, get my opportunity as well. I don't think a win is on, but maybe a third place is. I can hustle Finn McLaughlin. I can take him on. I can go for third position, and if something does kick off between Moira and Vila, I'm in prime position. Here we go. Vila is now starting to get that move up. Here's Caranta splitting up the inside of Belota. And look, Belota, he doesn't even realize it's happening until the back. Did Caranta get through to third place? Yes, he, he did. Has. Yeah, off screen. You saw it in the bottom corner of your screen there. Caranta through turn one. Now up into P3. Now down into P4. Oh! Now down into P5. No. Down into P4 as he gets squeezed onto the runoff area. He was very lucky that the cart didn't buck him into a spin there. So Caranta still hunting down this podium finish. But up in front, Vila is now within three tenths of Moya. If he can get in the draft on the next lap, then he has a chance. And Belota gets back on the inside of Caranta. Caranta comes back at him and just drives away. Lovely move from Caranta on the switcheroo. He's able to get back into fourth position. There's a card off in the background. I think that's Sita van Meert. Oh, her brilliant weekend has come to nothing. She fought her way all the way back to 20th as well. A great recovery. And Sita van Meert is spat out of the queue. That is an absolute disaster. Like you say, a brilliant weekend, but it's all gone wrong once again at the final. McLaughlin goes defensive and the gap for the race lead is down to three tenths of a second as well as we go on to the final lap. Who's going to take third in this one? Caranta fights for it fiercely but has to go to the outside line as down the inside. Who was that? Is that Belota? I think it is. Yeah, Belota in the 206 now back into that position of behind. No, he's not been able to do it. Shaw Gonzalez and Goldstein have yeah, joined this war as well. This indeed. is going to be a five-cart battle all the way for the podium. And as these three, uh, as these five, sorry, six, six drivers scrap it out for the final podium place, I think Moya has just done enough here to hold on in front of Vila. This is all about parking the bus for McLaughlin. He wants to hang on. as up the inside. That's a beautiful little lunge from Gonzalez, who's managed to work his way through past Sam Shaw. But this man out front, he won the first five heats of the weekend he won the super heat despite the pressure from eduardo vila it doesn't matter what anybody throws at him 2023 suera is his to command vamos for 2023 it's game on for ruben moya he dances to the win in suera it's the perfect weekend Win after win after win. Nobody can beat Ruben Moya in the Pantano in Suera 2023. Eduardo Villa tried his hardest throughout that race, but unfortunately and it was not enough. Look who came through in third. It's Gonzalez. Gonzalez wow. came through. He was at the back of that queue in seventh place going into the lap. And Gonzalez storms through from 22nd on the grid to third. It is an absolute Spanish route. My goodness me, a fantastic showing then here at Zuera, but there, the driver on your screen, Ruben Moya, a perfect weekend. I mean, you have to say, after all the hardships, all of the bad mm. luck, all of the misery that Ruben Moya has faced in his IAMI Euro Series journey so far, that is such a satisfying result. Yes, it's dominant. Yes, it's five wins and the Super Heat and the final. But if there's anybody in this paddock that is more deserving, I don't know who they are. Ruben Moya has done a fantastic job. Eduardo Vila in second from Eloy Gonzalez. What a battle to third. Belota is fourth from Shaw and Goldstein. Garcia is seventh. Atkins is in eighth from Chaus and Harrison. So there must have been an accident on the final lap then. Uh, Weisenberger, Mustienis and Dominguez in front of Gilter and Rattel. And then we have uh, Utran in 16th. McLaughlin came home 17th in the end. So there must have been a final lap incident. Ethan Faramond and Marcus Luzio from Mika Voss and Juan Aluja, Julian Carmen and Jules Caranta down in 23rd. So there it was. Uh, though two of them coming home right down the back. Marlo Bollier also getting spat out. Lantinga, Malizia, Granada, Counterin, Valsor, Tudiska, Petra Babichkova and Hugo Besson are the final finishers. Retirements for Sita van Meert, Danny Caronini, Fred Green and Harry Platten. There are so many drivers that you could talk about as being the superstars of the weekend. But just because of how he did it, just because of how the team has had to fight for this over the last year and a half, and just because all the bad luck in the world has hit this driver over the last four years, 
finally, it is nice to see Ruben Moya flapping the wings of joy as he comes across the line. After all the nightmares that ever could befall an X30 driver, Ruben Moya finally, finally gets the win in a final that he deserves. Comes in then onto the weighing scales and this is the tense moment for the drivers. You know it's going to be okay, but it, you still have that gut feeling that, oh, let's just make sure that we're all good. And it's a thumbs up and it is all good. He comes in then to congratulate yes, with his mechanic yes, and yes, that's what yes, it means. Yes, yeah. finally, finally for Ruben Moya. How many years has he had to wait for that moment? Oh, Ruben, drink it in, mate, finally. There is not a more popular man in this paddock that has gone through the hardship in the last five years. Finally, it's yours, Ruben. A great way to start the season. Three more rounds for Ruben Moya to go. Can he maintain this dominant performance as he goes through an absolutely stellar one? He ends this weekend then with 35 championship points compared to the 29 for Eduardo Villa. And Sam Shaw with the 19 championship points. You won two, three for this man on your screen, Ruben Moya. A brilliant, brilliant result. And as you can imagine, yeah, super happy with that one. I, I can, you can imagine there's quite a weight that's been lifted off the shoulders for the start of this season. Absolutely. I mean, considering all the hard work that's gone in for Ruben Moya, finally, we get to see what he can actually do. You know, he's had so many chances ripped from his knuckles, taken away from him with hardship after hardship. And finally, he gets the result that we all knew he was capable of. This is the crazy thing. We all knew he could do this. We all knew he had the talent. It's just never been the right chance, never been the right moment. It's all come undone for him at the last. So it's been wonderful to see him come through and finally get the win he deserves. Well, last but certainly not least, it is the podium ceremony for our drivers in the Senior X30 final. This is going to be one heck of a championship season heading to Belgium. So now we're getting ourselves ready for another great champagne celebration. In third position, representing Belgium, Sam Belota. The VDK Racing driver gets his 2023 campaign off to a solid start. This is exactly the way he wanted to go about it. A top three finish really gets his uh, game going for the 2023 season. In second position for Italy, Eduardo Villa. A great run for the TB car team. They pick up a podium in their first race of the season. Eduardo Villa is no longer a one hit wonder. Now he is a championship contender. And on the top spot, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's a Spanish victory for Spain, Ruben Moya. This has been such a long time coming for Ruben Moyer in the IAMI Euro Series. He utterly deserves it, but it's the first of many for the Pantano Racing Team. Please welcome to the podium, Giorgio Pantano! A great start to the team, and the Formula One driver, IndyCar star, and karting sensation makes his way to the podium for the first of many wins for the Pantano chassis. And in deference to our race-winning driver, the national anthem once again for Spain.
A terrific double victory for Spain in the IMA Euro Series. We now ask Carlos Hill to come forward, the circuit manager here at Zuera, to give the trophies to our top three drivers in Senior X30. Starting for Belgium in third, Sam Belluta. And in second position for Italy, Eduardo Villa. And to our race winner for Spain, Ruben Moya. And to our race winning team manager for the Pantano Racing Team, Giorgio Pantano. What a start to the season in Senior X30 in the IAMI Euro Series. A great way to kick off. Let's get all of the drivers together on the top spot, as close as we possibly can anyway. And Giorgio, no, 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 you need to be part of it. No, he's, he's already had his moment. He doesn't want to get sprayed with champagne. <laughs> he's already done that for many times in his career. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. Sam Belota, Eduardo Vila, and your race winner, Ruben Moya. And so for the last time on our podium here at Zuera here today, our boys can celebrate Fiesta style. It's time to get busy with the visit. Great work from our three Senior X30 drivers. Excellent stuff. Well, Eduardo's going to go and celebrate with the team. I'm going to cut in. Blimey, I think they've already started running to uh, Marienborg. Come and join me up at the front here, Ruben. We've all been waiting for this for quite some time, but finally you get to taste victory in the AMI Euro Series. The, the relief must be immense. Yes, finally we won here in Zuera. Uh, many years trying this. Back in the years 2017, it was the same. Very fast, starting from pole and then problems with the engine. So yeah, finally, after many years, we, we get it here in Zuera. So obviously now the focus has got to be Belgium coming up in seven weeks. Is the pace still going to be there for the Pantano or is there still more homework to do? Of course we'll be there. We have uh, Christian, he's amazing with doing the chassis, so it's always wherever we go, the chassis is the fastest, the tires always look the best. So the main thing is always him, the chassis is pff, amazing always. Fantastic. Enjoy the moment and enjoy the victory. Well done. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner here in Zuera, Ruben Moya.